I'm about 25, 30 kilometers in today's ride. It has been hilly as fuck today. Holy moly. It's taken me probably a good hour and a half, almost two hours to do what we've done so far today. And we got, we got cows. Hey, moo. Now that I've got their attention. <laughs> This is a uh, pretty common, lots of grass-fed cattle here in Australia. I mean, it's pretty well all grass-fed cattle. I don't think there's any, I, I think it's, uh, I don't even think there is any corn-fed uh, cattle here. So you see a lot of fields um, basically just leveled off so that the cattle can graze on grass. And you know, people say that it's uh, sustainable, right? And it's not really sustainable when we're, when we're cutting down the forest to produce one of the most energy intensive foods in the world. You know, cutting down forests, cutting down the rainforest. And just so that these guys here, moo, can graze all day long. I mean, it, it would be uh, a lot more efficient for the environment to plant, have permaculture farms with, you know, fruits and fruit trees and vegetables and because fruit trees actually create homes for animals, whereas like when you level out a forest, it destroys homes. And you know, obviously trees also provide a carbon sink and are much better for the environment than just having grass out there. But some people are under the misconception that, um, that grass-fed beef is actually sustainable, considering it's the most unsustainable um, uh, way of making food I, I think there is in the world. It's one of the most unsustainable things that there is. I, I would say even like corn-fed beef is more sustainable just because it takes up a lot less space. But yeah, these are my friends, my friends folks, my friends out on the road. Man oh man, I like Australia is absolutely beautiful country. Like the countryside here I'm about uh, 400 kilometers south of Sydney or so right now. And it's just like, just gorgeous. Like just mountains and, just mountains and shit everywhere, right? And you know, I have to ride up and down quite a few of them myself, but oh my God, it, it's like beautiful countryside here. And wow, it's just really, really surprising. I, di I didn't realize it would be this nice. And if anyone tells you that Australia is flat, then they're then they're on some kind of like really really good drug or something like that because it's it is really hilly here. It's just rolling hills the whole way, the whole way. If you want something that's flat and fast, you go to like Vietnam or Cambodia, just really really flatter. And also probably the ride across the Nullarbor that I'll end up doing is uh. That'll be flat as well, that's that's gonna be desert, so that'll be really nice and flat, which will be good as well. But yeah, just just loving it out here, loving it! Look at that, look at that! Ah, oh, baby. Hills and valleys everywhere, beautiful. Oh, good eye, mate, good eye, good eye. Oi, I finished off for the day. Today has been one of the hardest days I've had cycle touring. It has been non-stop hills the whole entire day. I've done at least, like, at least a thousand meters worth of climbing today. It has been absolutely crazy, crazy. I only managed to do just about, about 130 kilometers for the day. I wanted to do like 160 or so today, but it wasn't gonna happen with the road conditions. My goodness, my goodness, my goodness. I like literally have not any, any day on this cycle tour, on, uh, on this cycle tour so far, I've not experienced that, even in Asia. You know, I had one hard day in Asia, I remember, where I had to do a three or a 400 meter pass or something like that. It wasn't, it took me an hour and a half to get up, but out here, it has just been hills, hills, hills in rural Australia. It has been crazy. Don't, I was going to make like a really kind of whiny video today. 
um, at the end, just telling you about how hard the day has been, but we're not going to do that anymore. I will talk about some sad things. I saw today, along with being the hardest day physically, um, mentally has been incredibly tough as well. It's just been really, I think it's mainly the hills that were really kind of like, you know, knocking me down kind of mentally as well. It was just over and over and over again, but I also saw at least 30 dead kangaroos on the side of the road. Um, one dead lizard and a couple pieces of snakes on the side of the road. It's been it's been really uh, kind of really sad day in, in that regard. You know, I've, I've seen a few um, dead kangaroos, you know, maybe one or two every day at least. Um, but today it was like, I, I could not believe how many I saw. And it was like, Usually, like sometimes I see them, but sometimes I smell. I smell the uh, the roadkill. I smell it, and it's just oh, it's just a terrible smell. And you see the bones, and you see all the fur, and and you see, sometimes you see the expression on the kangaroo's face after it's been hit by a car. And it's just like it's whew, it's tough. It's tough. I see a lot of weird things on the side of the road, and like it's, it's a lot of, a lot of weird things. You know, like like I found like sixty dollars on the side of the road. Seen like knives on the side of the road. I just you just see the most random stuff on the side of the road, and you're just like, like, how 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 does it get there? And today, what I saw was, I saw an iPhone, an iPhone on the side of the road. So I'm just riding up this hill, and I and I just see this like uh, I just see it on the ground there. I'm like, why is there an iPhone on on the road? And so I go pick it up and it's like, and it's working and I'm just like, oh, <laughs> you know, you know, I just had that thought for a second, like, ah, oh, you know, I should take it, but I wasn't, I wasn't going to take it. And, um, you know, when I had my stuff stolen in Asia, it was fucking, it sucked. Pardon my French. My grandma's hated when I swear on camera, but it fucking sucked. It fucking sucked so much. I was just like, the next day I was so upset, um, I was so angry, and I wouldn't want someone else to feel feel that, right? So if you lose something or something stolen from you, it sucks, right? And I'm sure, you know, the person who, the owner of the iPhone was going to be, you know, really kind of like pissed off or, you know, whatever, like, where the hell did my iPhone go? And so, you know, I really... One thing that I try to do, try to do all the time now is I always try to put myself in other people's shoes and, you know, like, how are they going to feel if this happens or, you know, if I do this or whatever, right? So I just try to put myself in the other person's shoe and I'm sure, you know, that person's going to feel amazing if they get a call, you know, um, you know, telling them, oh, hey, you know, I, I've, I found your iPhone, right? So what I did, I just looked through the, uh, just looked through like the recent calls and, there had been nine missed calls from from one number in like the past hour from when I picked up the phone. So I was like, all right, well, that's definitely the, the guys who are, the people who are looking for the phone. So I called that number up and started talking to the guys and was like, you know, hey, like I, I, I found an iPhone on, on the side of the road. I'm, I'm guessing this is your iPhone. And they're like, oh my God, you found it. Like, where where are you? I'm like, I'm just at like Hard Acres Road here, which is just a little side road off the highway. And they're like, no way, we'll be there in a second. So literally they just drove out of their highway and came down um, basically to where I was. And they're like, where did you find this phone? And I'm like, it was just on the side of the road. They're like, oh my God. So we kind of figured out that it was probably on the top of the car. And you know, when they drove out earlier in the day, it just, you know, fell off the top of the car or something like that. And just something like that kind of odd happened. Um, so they're really, really happy that they got it back. And the guy was like, you know, like, what, what can I do for you? What can I do for you? And I'm just like, oh, yeah, like nothing. It's like, oh, you want, do you want like a beer or anything? And I'm like, nah, that's, it's cool. You know, it was, I, I don't need anything, right? There's nothing that I really need. So I didn't really, I didn't have anything to ask. But yeah, that was uh, kind of the nice days. Nice, nice ending to the day, to the tough, tough day. And, um, you know, put a big smile on his face, you know, left me feeling good as well. So everyone was feeling happy. But yeah, I just, you know, if, if you're gonna do something, you know, just think of the repercussions, think about how other people are gonna feel when you do it, before you do it. Cause that other person might feel like absolute shit. You might feel good for like a little bit, you know, 15, 20 minutes, but that person might feel shit for a long time. 
And so you don't really want to put them in a situation. So always, always, always put yourself in other people's shoes before you're going to, you know, do some kind of, uh, some kind of action that's going to affect others. That's all I got to say for today. That's all. Nice little anecdote for the end of the day. Yeah. <laughs> Actually, I think I picked that lesson up from uh, one of the Dalai Lama's books, uh, the, Pursuit, uh, the Art of Happiness or The Pursuit of Happiness. I can't remember the title off the top of my head. That's a, it's really good to live by. So please, 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 if you, if you like me, if you like my, my long and it's kind of getting a little crazy, getting a little shagadelic here. My, my hair, uh, subscribe to the channel, like or dislike the video, leave your questions or comments below, and I will catch up with you guys tomorrow. Cheers.